Mark, so um, let me make sure everybody can can hear me out there <laughs> uh, and check the the microphones uh, today. I did get a brand new microphone, so I apologize uh, if there was a short delay there. Okay, and uh, that is the diamond in the background that's going off the solar-powered uh, crystal which is catching the light. So I know people have asked me, hey, what's flashing back there? Um, but as I mentioned, our chairperson, Blandon Akakpo, um, is driving today uh, to another business deal uh, across Africa. So uh, we did pre-record an episode with Patty Frudenberg this morning and a wonderful guest uh, Simon, who we're going to see, and we're going to see the rejuvenation of African music. So super exciting to see what Simon is doing. And it's just been, been so amazing to see uh, his wonderful work, uh, just unbelievable. And I'm going to showcase a couple of his, his websites uh, from Kenya, uh, where he was born and raised, um, because uh, it was just just kind of really, really surprising to see the traditional instruments uh, that he is playing. And uh, his full name, of course, is Simon Okelo, O-K-E-L-O. -E and we're going to showcase that also today with Patty and I, uh, to where you can link up with Simon and his traditional African music uh, and playing the m very, very more so traditional African instruments. And uh, you'll be able to link up with Simon on LinkedIn. We're going to showcase uh, his, his websites and whatnot, as well as his profile on LinkedIn. Um, also, we kind of reversed things for him. We introduced him to please take a look at, since he's from Kenya, please take a look at our two ambassadors in training, uh, Mary Nidiritu from Kenya, and also we showcased uh, a brand new ambassador in training, uh, Nixon Akessa. So that was uh, so interesting to, to share back with Simon. And he's going to show us today his uh, Simon Javan Okelo website, uh, which is super, super, super exciting about what he's doing and also One Vibe Africa. He's going to, to share with us uh, his filmmaking, his music, everything that he has got going on uh, from Africa uh, to where he is uh, living today in Seattle, Washington, and, and all those opportunities that he has going on. So without further ado, let me put on Patty and, and Simon now, and uh, then I'll come back and, and say goodbye because we have another meeting coming up at 11 o'clock Eastern uh, daylight time but let me go on ahead and uh, hit the hit the play button here and thank you for joining us again for another africa update hey all right guys uh as was mentioned we do have a special guest today uh simon is with us and uh, of course patty is with us and uh, patty recommended that we we bring uh simon in for the othello uh, exhibit for 2022 and he's got some amazing stuff going on so i know a lot of people are wondering uh, what is it all about and everything but uh we promised we were going to share with uh simon what this exhibit for othello next year is all about so patty do you want to have a whack at it and and try to explain it or i can always follow up with the cleanup crew when I, I was appalled when I heard, like, I'm embarrassed to even say the title. I'm embarrassed to even say the title. I got to be honest. <laughs> it feels wrong, you know? And then when you shared the actual history of where that statement came from, I was even more upset. And it really made me dive even deeper into everything that's going on in the current uh, world, right? A uh, Black Lives Matter. And the idea that a statement like that could be taken uh, so literally and, and then just actions to follow are ridiculous. And we're trying to unveil all that cr craziness. So, you know me, I'm a little emotional because when it's wrong, there is no exceptions. 
So, uh, but Marty, I know I well. I feel you the same the way. Please, you'd say it. Yeah, I I feel the same way. When it's wrong, it's wrong, and that's it. And and I've had black people tell me, Marty, you're not even white. Um, you're a rainbow. And I belong to the NAACP down here. And and our little tiny Rosa Parks lookalike um, president, she she told me one day, she said, Martin this is what white looks like. And she pointed to a thing that was black. It was like a black valise. And she said, that's black. That's, you see that black leather valise? So we're all colored. <laughs> I was like, oh she is so, she is so amazing. She's a doctor and a minister. So, so Simon, yeah, to, to follow on to what Patty was saying, um, I was pretty shocked myself when all this came out in the Wall Street Journal and uh, how the president of the United States was listened to by uh, several servants and the very famous Fanny Kemble of England who was visiting. She was a superstar on stage in London, and she said this guy was disgusting and raunchy. Um, he was the hero of Amistad, the very famous movie where he defended the, the blacks and had them, you know, not put in prison and stuff. And so um, it was pretty amazing to hear how his mother, the first lady of the United States was physically revulsed and sickened when she saw the black man touch the white woman with his bare hands on stage while watching Othello in London. And uh, the son uh, writes things for the newspapers and uh, has a whole bunch of smack talk during dinners. John Quincy Adams, the president of the United States, the son of the former John Adams, about how wrong this is and how much he is against uh, what they called in those days was miscegenation. But this is uh, being against any kind of skin color being married. So like a, a Mexican woman decides she wants to marry an Asian man. Or you take like an Indian lady who decides she's going to get married to an Irish guy and live in Ireland. So this particular president is against this. And it was it was pretty shocking to the point where we wanted to have an exhibit about this. And so we've been working on it. Yeah. And so you're up to date, Simon. Uh, have you ever heard about any of this? You know, uh, I have. And uh, I also, you know, my attention was drawn to it further recently when Patricia shared with me, you know, um, the exhibit that you'll be putting up. Uh, and, you know, I'm just learning. So I, I wanted to hear more from both of you so that I could even, you know, learn more. But uh, for me, it's always about our individual actions. You know, what are we doing so that... Um, we can make the world a better place with the simplest things that, you know, we each have an opportunity to do in life, you know, to contribute to uh, making this world safer, you know, more equal, uh, giving access to, um, you know, to, to opportunities to people that are doing great work uh, and, you know, supporting communities that need it the most. So um, I think history is important then we have the, the current situation and then we have the future. So I feel that what you are doing is allowing us to reflect and then think about what actions are we going to take today that will impact tomorrow. So uh, I'm completely in alignment with its spirit. Yeah, I really like that, Patty. Uh, what actions are we going to take today to lead us into tomorrow? That was so beautifully said, Simon. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. That was beautifully said. And Simon, the history behind this, you know, I know Shakespeare. I, I, I've heard of the Othello, but, you know, I never really dived deep into the story because it was kind of like a, a high school thing. And then, you know, I got self-absorbed into all my current books that are out there. But this story really is amazing because it's about the love, the innocent, beautiful love of um a prince was it a prince i believe yes yes the equivalent of that yeah 
I don't yeah. know if you if you if you have memory of the uh, of that play from Shakespeare. I'm not sure if you. I didn't remember it, and uh, I I also after one of these segments uh, when I became aware of the exhibit and all that, I, I wanted to learn more, and I was like, wow, a, a beautiful love story turned wrong because of somebody's terrible opinion. Um, you know, and I don't want, now I feel like I'm judging that person. Um, but you know, I, I feel bad for people that are so closed minded. Um, I don't want to judge them. Um, I just want to pray on them that they could understand that love is a beautiful thing. Um, so what we look like should totally be indifferent. It should not matter. Love is is universal and love is on it, it, it has no it, it, love is 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 the the ether love is ether okay i'm gonna calm down now it's too <laughs> no it's 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 just interesting to to have these discussions and and it's been amazing to see um like howard university picked this issue up and and universities like king's college are picking it up in the Shakespeare Theater in London. Because at first, when we first started doing this, we were considered a bunch of whack jobs. Um, we even had comments, another outlandish, outrageous, inappropriate exhibit that makes no sense whatsoever for the Presidential Center. It's dumb and stupid, and you gotta stop coming up with these crazed things and you know, focus on like easy, low-hanging fruit stuff and I was like, no, no, you'll see, just wait. And and when it was in the Wall Street Journal, it was pretty amazing, the Columbia professor um, and what he published. And, and I did put up, you know, what Dr. Joy Nicole Martinez has been saying here to, to love absolutely. So, well, Simon, will you please tell us um, about your groove thing and the good vibes for Africa? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, One Vibe Africa is... Uh, it's like a movement, uh, but it's a, a non-profit organization, both in Kenya and Seattle. But there's also uh, a for-profit side of it known as One Vibe Media that uh, I'm mostly focusing on. But I'll start with One Vibe Africa because that's where it all started. In 2008, uh, in January, you know, in December 2007, there was elections in Kenya and they were sharply disputed and uh, the different political sides went to war with each other because the results were not accepted. So people were divided along ethnic lines and, you know, over 1,500 people were killed. And around that time I was a DJ. So together with a group of other DJs, uh, we were finding ways to bring peace and to uh, find alternatives to the viol violence, uh, especially because we knew that the youths that were listening to the music that we played were some of the perpetrators of the violence. So we organized a concert, a peace concert that brought, uh, you know, uh, youths together. And uh, after that, we raised a lot of money and we used that money to buy food. At that time, people were starving because uh, there has been there had been no business going on for months uh, because of the the fighting and uh, basically the country was at a standstill because the election results were disputed. Um, so since then, I realized that music was bigger than just uh, enjoyment. Music was, uh, uh, you know, a weapon for revolutions, a weapon for transformation, an economic empowerment tool. And since then, I've been, you know, producing events uh, in Seattle, where I live, uh, and also in Kenya, where I started doing this work. And the proceeds from the events have been sustaining the operation of an education, music and art program that we run in Kenya, where we offer, you know, we have a rehearsal space where young people go and practice music. They interact with artists from various countries. Uh, from across the world, from Seattle to uh, Europe to Middle East. Uh, a lot of artists visit our space. Uh, we have dance program, uh, you know, graphic design, filmmaking, photography, and all of this happened 
because of the events I organize, both online. Uh, for example, I organize an, a daily event on Clubhouse known as the Daily African Proverbs. Uh, and, you know, all the communities I build through this movement goes back to helping to uh, grow the work that I do in Kenya uh, that has been supporting over 2,000 youths uh, since 2008. Um, you know, all of this work started because I was raised by a mother that was very, very uh, powerful and she's a, a woman that inspired me to continue doing this work even after she passed on last year and she inspired a lot of other kids that grew up in an orphanage home our home was turned into an orphanage home uh you know from 1997 to 2013 uh, our hometown kisumu is the se the third largest city in kenya but it's right by lake victoria um and lake victoria is the largest lake yeah. in africa Let's take a look at that because some people tend to get lost about, they don't know like, you know, even where Kenya is up on the top right of the 55 countries. I have a lot of people mention to me, they don't even know how many countries that there's 55 in Africa. So um, I always say seeing is, is believing and let's go in there. Let's take a look at first of all, um, where you're talking about so people can kind of sort of see. And what I'll do is I'm going to bring up uh a map here, guys, uh, to show people up on the top right corner. I'll just say almost the northeast corner of Africa. Um, and we're down here coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, maybe I can shrink that over like that, guys. So down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Patty is up in New York right now. And Simon, you're over in Seattle. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> hey, All Marty, right. by the way, while you're looking for that, uh, when it was Africa Day, which also uh, Simon started uh, the 24-hour Africa Day, first one on Clubhouse, it was amazing. Uh, the things that we learned on there and that day made me so interested that I didn't realize Africa was, I mean, I, I know it's an entire continent, <clears throat> but I didn't realize like how each, each country has its own specialty and we we learned so much about the teas and 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 oh my god just just so many things i mean we could have a whole nother 24 hours discussion on it but it made me dive into what you're doing now marty and i loved it and all the rivers uh and and the oh beautiful 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 yeah so uh this is where simon uh is from kenya yeah, and as you, as you can see, Lake Victoria is huge, you know? It's the largest lake in Africa, and I live right next to it. I grew up right next to it, you know? Yeah. So, but my hometown, Kisumu, also in the 90s, it, it had the highest HIV prevalence in the world. So a lot of people were, were, were dying. We had families that were headed by like 12-year-olds, you know? Uh, so that's why my mom and the women from our community started Young Generation Center, the orphanage home where we still operate from until today, you know, but it's no longer an orphanage home, it's a creative hub, you know, we have, we have arts programs and also tech and, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of, it's, it's, a, it's a place where arts and technology and music collide, you know, and community and activism and, and journalism, you know. So it's a it's a really rich place. Uh, I'm going to be there before the end of this month. Right. So um, Marty, he also did a, the documentary. If uh, how can we see the documentary again, Simon? The documentary is so beautiful, and he highlights all this that he just discussed. The documentary is called Madaraka, the documentary. Uh, if you want to Google Madaraka, the documentary.com, that's the website for the documentary. Um, the best way, we are doing only private screenings now, you know, we are taking a small fee and we organize an event with specific groups that want to watch the documentary. Then we, we have a, we have a program, we create a program together with, uh, the group that wants to host the, 
the film screening uh, and you know some of the topics that we've hosted for include uh, you know international women's day uh, we've also done conversations around culture and economic empowerment and collaboration um, so currently we are in the process of doing the screenings and also mm -hmm. Being the film festival circuit. That's fantastic. And this is the filmmaking entrepreneurship section on One Vibe. If uh, anybody goes to onevibeafrica.org, um, we also wanted to send you some love, uh, Simon, and let you know over at the Presidential Center. Um, if you come into the Presidential Center on the trustees and board section, uh, you'll notice down towards the bottom past our, our 29 members, down here you'll see some of our ambassadors. And we just had actually put in, um, a couple months back was uh, our ambassador in training. She's an attorney there in Kenya, Miss Mary and Nadiritu. So Mary is busy at the courthouse uh, every day. And then um, I'll, I'll speed forward here to another um, ambassador. He's brand new, just announced uh, last week, Mr. Nixon Akessa. So he's an ambassador for Kenya. So I wanted to, to highlight those two people, if that's any kind of connection for you um, in Kenya and and if we were to take a look at uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, those would definitely be uh, amazing connections. Yeah, Nixon is right here for everybody watching this. Uh, Nixon is right here, Nixon Akessa. A wonderful, wonderful guy in uh, Nairobi. And then Mary, like I said, Mary Nigiritu. She is also right here. And I'd like to bring up her profile. So please connect. Get you a little bit better photo of Mary there. They're both in Kenya and uh, it's been amazing to see, um, you know, the things Mary's doing with Catch Global Foundation and and then let's, you're on, on, cause we talk on LinkedIn also, Simon. So I am on LinkedIn. And how did you spell your last name? O K E L O. Okay. There you are right there. So I'm going to send you a connection request uh, today. Cause it looks like we're a second level connection. Do I have, is that the right profile? Yeah. That's you right there. All right, so I'm going to send you a connection request so we can connect up. And everybody, please connect with Simon at One Vibe Africa. This is his profile here. Simon Okelo, O-K-E-L-O, -E if you're looking for him. And uh, let's follow him as well. And he has a great tagline here at an African Proverb. It's time to change the narrative about Africa. You know, Africa is, is scheduled to be the largest by population by 2050. It's going to exceed India. And India is getting ready to surpass uh, China as the most populous, you know, continent in the world. And I'd like to go back to One Vibe Africa, uh, Simon. Is there anything else here? on this particular site that, that we could navigate to for you? Now, uh, I would suggest that we go to simonjavanokelo.com. That's the site where I'm putting a lot of work into. And uh, just tomorrow we will be launching, we'll be relaunching it. Uh, and uh, I'm currently looking for people to subscribe to through simonjavanokelo.com. You can subscribe to the Daily African Proverbs so that as we share new proverbs, you become a member, you pay a little fee, and uh, mm -hmm. every every day you, you get new proverbs before it's published. Uh, and then, you know, we'll give people special privileges as well. Um, you know. Uh, that, looks really, that looks really nice. 
Yeah. I noticed, is that the instrument on the wall behind you in the back? That's right. That's right. What, can you tell us about this? What? How beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, that instrument is called Nyatiti, and uh, it's a traditional music instrument from my culture. I'm from the Luo tribe. Um, and um, this instrument is special to me because it's the only traditional music instrument from the Luo that has, has reached the global stage. You know, we have other music instruments from our tribe uh, and many other African uh, ethnic groups and tribes have their own instruments. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in the last 50 years, Africans are no longer embracing and preserving their music and their culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, being so far away from home, I, I just fell in love with Nyatiti and uh, I have three daughters who are very, very curious. So I have to, I have to engage in my own culture in order for me to teach them about my culture, you know? Sure. Uh, so that's why I'm pursuing uh, traditional African music, Nyatiti, so that I can continue bringing it to the global stage similar to the guitar so that people can know Nyatiti just like they know the guitar so that we can normalize playing the Nyatiti in every family, in every household, we can bring Nyatiti to the world. Well, it <laughs> sounds wonderful here in, in Shelby, North Carolina, we have, of course, um, the famous three finger picking method was invented by Earl Scruggs and that's for the banjo, but um, I'll actually bring up that so you can see it because when you go into the earl scruggs museum here where he was born and raised um you'll see actually the original gourd with you know the original banjo and it's it's credited as soon as you walk in that this is originally an african instrument with the strings and so it's amazing to see africa here in the middle of the deep south um, being celebrated right and this guy's most famous song that he ever did i think everybody out there has heard of and knows um it was for the theme song for the beverly hillbillies oh so yeah everybody knows that song but he actually authored you know hundreds and hundreds of songs um and he invented the three finger picking method which was just something that was unheard of everybody played that instrument the way that they did you know for the longest time and no one really understood what earl was talking about um until they actually tried it and said hey try this new method with your fingers and so uh pretty interesting to see the real truth about where the banjo comes from um out of africa and and when you walk into the museum here that's the first thing you see is the original it's it's a gourd you know with strings on like a stick and so that's where that you know came from and uh i always am like so impressed when i go in there to see it so wow. it's kind of kind of interesting to see and and yeah that's the exhibit case right there that that showcases um where the journey begins and how people start playing the banjo and how it becomes popular here in the United States. So I'll just want to turn that off and go back to um, Simon's new website that he's really putting uh, a lot of a lot of activity into. And he said it's right here, SimonJavanOkelo.com. Yes, uh, I'm going to, you know, we are, we're having a lot um, in the works. I'm also adding a collective, you know, I've been building a collective of, uh, uh, you know, filmmakers, graphic designers, uh, photographers, uh, people from across the world. Oh, that's the video. I'll let you play. Yeah. <laughs> It's so nice. Yeah. 
And what is, is that also a gourd or some kind of plant or is that made out of wood, Simon? It's uh, it's the, the root of a tree. Ah, oh, see that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is so close. Yeah, it has eight eight strings. It's a beautiful wow. instrument. Dude, you have the coolest uh, outfit, bro. <laughs> Next time I'll wait for this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're like better than Ziggy Marley, you know, or I tell you, look look. And 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 the bells are actually down on your uh down on your ankle. You're playing those bells on your ankle. Uh, they are here too. You see them. I walk with them everywhere. Oh, <laughs> you know, I bring, oh wait I, a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I gotta! I gotta! I gotta! I gotta! I gotta! Let me! Let me! Let me stop sharing for a second. I gotta come back <laughs> to that because I missed it. You want to see the bells? Oh, there you go. Yeah! 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 <laughs> well, look. I, I brought Simon. I had to go get from Africa this little frog yeah. that I play. Yeah! 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 <laughs> Yeah, no, that's I, a question. I love that. <laughs> but the, have you seen this from Africa? Yes, 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 yes. Can you tell me more about this? You know, um, that must be played by a tribe that, uh, you know, they 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 believe that the, fr the frog is sacred, you know? Ah. Uh, yeah, recently I've just been researching on on tribes across Africa, actually, that wow. believe that the crocodile is sacred. And uh, yeah, so they make a lot of art uh, out of, you know, the specific animal that they believe is sacred, you know. Uh, for example, the tribe I come from believes that uh, the, the hippo is sacred because a lot of ah. artists, you know, uh, make a lot of artwork with the hippo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. And this was another one. Um, it's it's the bottom of a that. gourd. Yeah. I have a similar one. I love yeah. sound. Yeah, me too. I don't want to get into it because I, we will we will all get lost here. We should do a, a whole show <laughs> <laughs> and just and just uh, we will uh, we will bring out everything. <laughs> you know, I just brought to mind also something from Disney World. Um, yeah, and, and I'm sorry, but it just brought to mind all the beautiful woodwork. I'm like, wait, I do have beautiful woodwork uh, in Africa in 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 the uh, Epcot, but it's it's authentic. Um, someone that 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 is from Africa carving the wood and the woodwork is amazing besides what goes behind it like you said the tribes uh believe that they were sacred uh but the, the the woodwork even your instrument is so beautifully done i just wanted to say it's amazing yeah and it's 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 beautiful to play it too you know it's uh it's it, it has taken me like 10 years to get comfortable playing it in front of people you know so uh it probably to other people shorter because they had the time to dedicate to learning it every day. Uh, but, you know, I'm in the U.S., so I, I, I was isolated. So, you know, I just learned when I was not at work, you know, I used to work nine to five until this May when I decided to focus on running One Vibe Media full time, uh, being a podcaster, being a full time father, you know, and focusing on my music and uh, my creative endeavors. So. I have created more time. So that was the first song uh, we, we were listening to. It's called Chandore. And Chandore is, you know, suffering. Suffering, especially for black men, you know. Uh, black men are always expected not to even cry when they feel sad, you know. Not to be emotional when they are, uh, they should be, you know. Uh, and uh, currently I'm, I'm working on releasing the second one. It's called Sulwe. Sulwe means star. You know, so um, this is about the importance of stars in guiding people and how each one of us has a star that guides us. But it takes work to recognize what your star is and ensure that you allow it to guide you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. I'm grateful and I'm sure I'll be coming back again.
Well, thank you so much. It's so soothing to to listen to it. It's so magical. Um, we're so honored and impressed uh, with your talent. And thank you for spending that 10 years to to be able to do that. And thank you for being our guest today and sharing with us a little bit more about Africa and things we didn't know about its beauty. And keep on playing, man. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Take care, Simon. Well, Patty, uh, uh, we're going to go back to our program because we're recording this in the morning for when people are watching live uh, later today. <laughs> and uh, any final impressions about, um, you know, Simon and his music? I mean, the outfit, the music, the instrument, uh, just unbelievable when you think about more beautiful things coming out of Africa. Well, I do want, I, I, you know me, I'm always like eager to share. And he was also in the process of collecting instruments um, that people might be wanting to donate uh, to send over. He, he's trying to figure out a way because that's complicated because it's like large items, you know. Uh, but I know he has oh, like yeah. a storage place in, in, in um I don't want to say the wrong place. I thought Denmark, but I might be off. But anyway, the point is, um, you know, that is in the process of um, coming to send over music. Like he said, that's the program that they're running with music and arts. So if anybody uh, has any music, I, I told him I would help. So I'm also uh, happy to receive any um, instruments. I'm actually going to be talking to the schools in the local areas to see if they're interested in uh, joining in this venture. So yeah, great things are happening. Amazing. Wow. Wow. Can yeah. you imagine the schools um, hearing that music or even, I mean, I know you can't go to every school in New York, but um, even if that, that film was played and showcased to further spread, like he said, you know, things from Africa and that beautiful music. It makes me wonder if anything ever occurred with um, some music in the, in the court of England, you know, when uh, the original Othello actually was visiting as an ambassador of the King of, of Barbary, which is of course today, modern day Morocco, but uh, that's not that far away from, from Kenya to Morocco. It's not, that's really like, you know, Northern Africa, it's not that far away. Yeah. And, and I thought it was amazing to see that I have this gourd here today yes. with an instrument and that uh, here in Shelby, where I live, they credit as soon as you walk into the banjo museum, the Earl Scruggs museum, which, you know, is, is more, uh, more like bluegrass down the street. We have the Don Gibson museum. He's very famous, um, for more, more country music hundreds of songs for country music. But as soon as you walk into the Earl Scruggs Museum, you see the, the original banjo from Africa there. And wow. so that is like super cool. But it does make me wonder if they ever had any kind of, of music performance played in the court, uh, you know, because Queen Elizabeth, of course, um, has the original Othello stay there for half a year. And they said they did have a big parade, you know, when he when he first came in. So oh. to celebrate and a, and a lot of people were had never before seen a black person. So this should be pretty interesting. Uh, and, and we may want to try to to figure out some way to incorporate his music into to what we're doing. I don't know. I know. A again, like the, the, the music, it, it, it's so, it's very interesting how each country has their specialty too, you know? Um, so I would love to learn a little bit more about that. Um, but that, that yeah. great highlights. And, and like, and, and you had asked me, um, you know, for me, this, this, uh, interview with Simon, he's one vibe and it reminds me of one love, you know, and that's uh, right. That's my one vibe. Yeah. One and the colors he was wearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what a great guy. Well, thank you for bringing him to us. And uh, I will catch you later during today's show. Awesome. Okay. Bye, Marty. Back at you. Bye. Well, guys, um, that was just uh, so much fun. Um, such an amazing person. And thank you to everybody. Uh, Badranath. Um, uh, we appreciate 
uh, your comments. And Patty, uh, we are going to jump into the Othello show. Uh, Dr. Mathudmita, uh, Panda from India. Um, so many of you uh, sending us your love. And I hope that you really enjoyed um, the nice music. Uh, Kulsum Badri, Salam, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, I hope that you just just uh, loved hearing that music. Uh, we hope to hear more uh, Solomon Taylor, Solomon Titus Taylor. Um, thanks a lot, guys, for another terrific show. And take care now. Catch you next month.